Godzilla! It looks like Godzilla, but it's not. Still, we should run like it is Godzilla! Though it isn't. These videos are not for children. If you are a children, then piss off. Hey there, I'm Vin Fuso, and I have very limited knowledge on this subject, so if you're a deep lore Godzilla fan, you're probably going to be pissed off at my ignorance, but here we go. I was never really big into Godzilla as a kid. You know, honestly, I was never really into dinosaurs in general. Wasn't into Jurassic Park. I begrudgingly liked The Land of Before Time, but just barely. And don't you even get me started on Theodore Rex. And I know someone in the comment section is already typing, Actually, Godzilla is a prehistoric amphibious reptile. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. He looks like Reptar, so I'm gonna treat him like Reptar. Anyway, the concept of Godzilla never really appealed to me. The whole giant city destroyer never really made me want to board the hype train here. But man, let me tell you, when I first saw the first ever American Godzilla commercial as a kid, I was kind of excited. I'll admit it, I know it's a cold take, it's an unpopular opinion, but I actually like then, and even now still, like the design of the character. The mo not the movie! Movie not so much. But just the overall design of this, I don't know, I, I, it's kind of cool. Granted, it definitely distanced itself from your typical Toho Godzilla, but as someone who really didn't give a crap about the original Gojira, I, 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 just, I, just, thought it, I just thought it looked cool. I was a kid. I even owned a gigantic Godzilla action figure as a kid. And am I really showing off 22 years later to complete strangers over the internet as to what kind of action figures I got when I was like 10? You bet your ass I am. Anyway, I was finally actually interested in seeing a Godzilla movie. And looking back, who could blame me? There were ads everywhere in sight. Bus stops. Buses. Some other shit, I'm sure. This creature was crossing over with Taco Bell and Doritos. His merch was everywhere. I specifically remember that back in elementary school, one kid came in with a Godzilla backpack. And let me just tell you, it was a talking point that lunch period. Ah, uh, those were simpler times back then. Hell, my man even got several music videos. Say what you will about Eric Roberts, but in 1998, Zilla was America's number one video vixen. But as most of you know, uh, the, the the actual movie sucked. It it was it was pretty bad. It wasn't well received by critics or moviegoers. It was just uh, unfortunate. I mean, come on, all he did was stomp around through a city, leave Zilla-sized holes in buildings without them somehow not collapsing? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought I was tuning in to see the destruction of a city, not, not a Bugs Bunny cartoon. Went through that entire movie without crushing the obvious jabs at Siskel and Ebert, what's even the point? And to top it off, he even made Godzilla babies. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm not, I'm not kidding either, that's something that really happened in that movie. This dude's just out there leaving little manilas everywhere. And for the record, Matthew Broderick didn't help the situation. At this point in my life, I've seen Matthew Broderick in two things I liked. And this ain't either of them. Three if you count his Rick and Morty appearance. That, that was alright. That was alright. I like that. The movie, while intended to be a disaster movie, really just comes off as a complete mess. The movie just didn't seem to get anything right, and you didn't have to be a Godzilla expert to see that they kinda did the character wrong. Hell, they couldn't even get the sex of the character right. Throughout the 1998 film, Godzilla is referred to as he, as he normally is. Except he's the one laying eggs. So what is he, a goddamn seahorse now? Well, no. Because apparently they actually CGI'd, and I cannot, I cannot, I would not. I wouldn't make this up. They actually CGI'd a vag on that thing. And this is confirmed by the movie's commentary track. 
This is in fact a female Godzilla. Does that mean I should be putting sensor bars on these scenes? Am I, am I getting demonetized for this? Because I really can't afford- I'm not making money as it is. This was awful. Though I stand by my original statement in saying, it looked cool though. However, that wasn't enough to wow audiences. And it definitely wasn't enough to wow original Godzilla fans. Or Godzilla's creators. The holder of the GZ rights were very unimpressed by this incarnation of the beast. I mean, there was nothing about this version of the character that they appreciated. They didn't like the way it looked. They didn't like the way it behaved. They didn't like the movie's representation of it. It just... L's all around. After the movie came out, there was briefly an animated sequel series. Which I've never watched, but I've heard good things about. The movie Off the Big Good Bad. So this series was based on the exit laid all over the city. Stupid premise, but I'll be honest, I still think that design looks kinda cool. Look, I know it sucks, but I'm just stating it doesn't look like it does. It's actually funny because this series was made to cash in on the success they thought the 1998 movie would generate, but instead it kinda wound up being a black mark on the show altogether. People seem to genuinely enjoy the cartoon because despite keeping the 98 design, it tried to distance itself from the movie and it kept the spirit of the original dino dink everyone fell for. But after that show ended, it seemed like the end for our reptilian friend. And for a while it was. That is until the 50th anniversary of Godzilla, when the movie Final Wars was released. It was decided that the American Godzilla adaptation would meet face to face and stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with its original source material. For the film and the overall greater continuity, the American Godzilla was renamed Zilla, or Jira in Japan. This was because Toho felt that the American version of their franchise mascot had taken the god out of Godzilla by making him an oversized lizard as opposed to a modern myth. And yes, once again, I am aware he's not a dinosaur, even though he very clearly is. It's also been said that prior to this official renaming, the US design was referred to as Geno, which stood for Godzilla in name only. Well, you really don't need to be blasted by atomic breath to feel that burn. Regardless, this was going to be a battle to behold. This was going to be a fight of epic proportions that many never thought they'd see. I don't think that they were hoping to see it either, but still, this could be kind of cool. This is like if Jason took on Jason X. Oh, wait, no, no, that actually happened. Hold on. Um, this would be like if Ash from Evil Dead somehow took on... No, oh, that also was a thing. This would be like, you know what? You get the picture. It was a big deal. So now these two colossal mammoths stand toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Only one can sir. Oh, that's it. Oh, no, no, that's it then. That's the fight. That, that's all. Jeez, Toho, tell us how you really feel. What kind of Pokemon battle was that? Toho said Charizard used Tailspin, and it was super effective. Not only is Zilla taken out of the rest of the movie, but it never actually returns in a future Godzilla installment. As it is a quick hi and bye, don't call us, we'll call you. But we probably won't. But I don't think too many fans wept over such a decision. 1998's Godzilla is a pretty universally hated movie. If anything, this ass whooping is probably what a lot would consider fan service. I can imagine many standing up and cheering. I think there might be a comic or two where uh, Jira returns to take on Gojira, but really, you know, who gives a shit? You got washed out, fool, you done. That was a squash. A one round knockout is over for you. Time to try and find a new career. Maybe look into Geico. I, I don't know. They have a history of employing your kind. Is that, is that specious? Ladies and gentlemen, this is Alex Jones, and we are breaking the conditioning. Now look, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm kind of retarded, which is why I liked and subscribed to the Social Injustice Warriors channel. I even clicked that little bell to stay notified. You have to look into it, people. But then I began to uncover what I believe to be a secret nefarious plot orchestrated by Zionist reptilians. Now give me a second, digging deep. I discovered that he wants you to quote-unquote follow him on Twitter. Now think about that for a minute. What kind of person, what sort of individual wants you to follow them? You know who else wanted people to follow them? The world's biggest Beach Boy fan. <laughs> Charles Manson. <sighs> Those who want to show their support donate to the guy's Patreon for exclusive content. Now why is it so exclusive? 
What's this guy hiding from the public? What do those Patreons see that the people of YouTube don't? Then I noticed, he also has a PayPal, and just for the low price of $22 plus shipping, you can get yourself a SIJW t-shirt, Social Injustice Warrior. So let's put this all together. He wants people to follow him, he calls you VTards, he wants you all to donate your money to him, and he wants all of you to wear the same clothing. So that just leads to ask, what kind of a hive-like cult is this man operating? V-Infuso, the social injustice warrior.